do choose it. I'd be surprised. I mean, Wu does like Ezreal. Corky, of course, is available. Something you highlighted earlier on has that slight advantage. But Ezreal has pretty much been the pick of the tournament that everybody has favored. Hasn't had the best win rate, though. He was 100% pick ban, actually, up until the semifinals, where the teams did go away from him. So both of these guys realized they have the ability to play against Ezreal. Ezreal's kind of a luxury for these teams. They like having him, but he's not game-changing. And I think that is going to be a Sona that they get in to avoid that synergy. And I actually don't know what TPA is going to go for here because they had a split push comp with Nidalee. But with that being banned out, they do have to be forced to almost group up unless Stanley has something else he can pull out that he's able to split push wish with. Azubu Frost liked all the 5v5 team fights in the last game, and they might be trying to force that type of composition again. Remember, we did see Lux support. We've seen Zyra support. We've seen many different supports from Mad Life. Not forgetting Alistair available. One of his favorite champions. We saw him picking up a couple of kills, and there is the Sona pick, along with Lil Balls taking Mundo. Definitely an interesting pick, and immediately Rapid Star gonna take up Anivia. Obviously, we saw toys with Anivia last time. Rapid Star, we mentioned it in the start. He went from level 10 to 2200 ELO on Anivia alone. He's the Korean frog in, in a lot of ways for Nivea and known like that on the Korean servers. Lil Balls only had victories on Maokai and Mundo this time. He had his first loss with Maokai in the last game, switching it up, saying, I'm just going to go with Mundo here, trying to keep his undefeated record going. I would expect that Nivea to be locked in. They don't want, well, they want the comfort from Rapid Star and the control, especially after a Mundo pick. They can wall him off, they can stun him. Mundo has to walk straight into fights, so he's very easy to kite around if you have something like an Anivia. And they could be going for a very mobile comp if they go with these two picks. And that could just be on top of it. They might just be looking for global map presence and mobility. So Shen being switched, and it is oh. going to be Maokai locked in. And that is going to be Cloud Templar very happy that he's got his tree back. And it could be a Caitlyn poke alongside so now that works well the piltover peacemaker it's just as good as the mystic shot and these guys are actually taking their time with picks and bands we've seen some much faster champion selects in the previous rounds there's a lot of discussion going down and tpa coming oh. out with the unconventional eight two carries caitlin lock in and we could see a twisted fate not sure i haven't seen tpa play a twisted fate yet in this tournament it's majorly just been banned out because messiah from team we was so good at it this would be their nothing to lose strategy, all in early, trying to gank other lanes. But they're just sitting on these picks, they're really talking it over, or they're just trying to mind game the enemy. Well, Toys isn't talking at all right there on your camera. He is switching to a Cassadin. What's he thinking of? He Carthus. goes for Carthus. It's a mirror mirror. matchup from what we saw last time, but different players on it. So even though, this will be very telling because Toys outlane Rapid Star. Anivia versus Karthus last time, and then Rapid Star came in with the team fights on Karthus. It'll really be Toys' time to display his skill if he can outlane him again and prove that it's not just a champion matchup thing. But they like the matchup back and forth, and that Zyra support would be huge. Going again for the heavy AoE team comps, nothing better than that gigantic knockup ultimate from Zyra. And Vladimir looking like he's going to be the top lane as well, and he's going to be picked up for Shai. We just went to see whether it gets locked in, as it is. How would you build against this? I mean, we've seen the lanes switching around. Ooh, Janna could come out there. Alistair may be coming out along with Singe. Let's see. We're they're just toying with us right now, trying maybe. to go back and forth. No, they're discussing. I mean, you can see Cloud Templar. He's having a discussion. He's talking to his team. He's like, which do they feel is better? And Jax was being left available for Shy. Oh. And he'd locked it in. It's going to be Zyra and Jax. We're going to get to see Shy. they have so much AoE and then they just have a Jax who's an all-in champion and they're just gonna try to dive heavily onto BB but he has to dive through, through choices Karthus and it could be really dangerous for them it's really gonna be about them trying to get AoE damage on everyone and then have Woong and Shy for cleanup because they'll stay so safe in the back the Caitlyn pick has to tell us something though are they going for heavy poke are they going to just destroy the lane because last game they had the vein Lulu that laid right up against Sona Ez and nothing's a stronger AD carry laner than Caitlyn. They might just be looking for a fast push strategy, maybe globals, and Stanley's been on Shen in the past here. Man, the last time they picked Karthus Shen, they did lose the game. That's both of these teams 0 for 1 with that composition, but they're going for it again. This is their nothing to lose strat. It's going to be pretty big for them. Well, there's a lot of global play in there, of course, with the Karthus. 
and the Shen Ultimate. They're going to be diving down. They could multiple pile on, certainly the bottom lane or top lane, wherever they choose to go, especially with BB in play. We saw it very aggressive early on. How do you match these up? And this is going to be a lot about early ganks coming out from Cloud Templar versus the early laning from TPA. That Caitlyn Sona lane, super high poke, is going to decide so, so much of this game. If they can obliterate Wu and get him out of the game, that's what they'll need to do. And the team fights, of course, coming out from Karthus, trying to get back the errors they made last game. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get underway. It is going to be game two. Azubu Frost 1-0 up. If you would like to see them take a second game and clean sweep 2-0 into a possible 3-0, Give them a cheer, ladies and gentlemen, Azubu Frost. Now heading into game two, TPA down 0-1. They need to win three of the next four. If you want to see them take game two, let them hear you. So as we get into the game, there you see the stage. There you see the Summoner's Cup. That is what they are playing for very sparkly and I can assure you it is also very heavy <laughs> it's a pretty huge thing as we are getting the game underway so Taipei Assassins coming into this next match they are 1-0 down they have picked up the Carthus Shenel combo how do you feel these team comps you know how will they stack up as things get underway it's gonna be about frontline control for TPA last game they had a very hard time getting to the targets they wanted to going to be hard to get through the Zyra. She's very, very hard to run it. Again, Azubu Frost might have the teamfight edge, and TPA just has to win laning and mid-game harder. That's what they've done in the past. They've ended games very early on, and all five members of Azubu Frost getting slightly spotted out there. They're going aggressive level one. TPA trying to hold this off. They do have a defensive formation. They're actually all grouped up around here. They have a ward on their blue buff. They're worried about Azubu's level one, and they might just try to do something sneaky. So Zubu Frost stood on top of a ward at the moment, so Taipei Assassins know exactly where they are. There goes the sapling showing Taipei Assassins in the bush. If you have just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, Zubu Frost 1-0 up as the blue side against Taipei Assassins as the red side. Currently, the invades seem to have backed off. Everybody has gone back their own way. Taipei Assassins still lingering, though. We see Cloud Templar backing away. Cloud Templar teleporting off. Yeah, now it's actually because he used so much of his mana scouting with his saplings, he had to go back to base if he wanted to have mana for his jungle, especially since it looks like they're starting red buff. He'll need to have mana left for his blue. If they go for an invade, they did place that ward early, which tells me they might want to see a delayed invade possible, but it could get countered by the fact there's two wards on that blue buff. There's a lot of pings going down here, and it does seem to me that Azubu Frost has something kind of sneaky planned here. We'll see if they are able to execute it. And Toys taking away the manager Wraith there. Very nicely done. As a level one, getting that steal in. Took a bit of damage for his troubles. Is he going to go for lane change though? He is heading south. This could be a car that's down the bottom. Or is he just going to go for the blue? I'm not too sure what he's going to help out. Oh, and this is actually a fast push mid strategy. We know they like taking the mid tower first early. And they're going to have Sona Caitlyn trying to 1v2 up against them. But they're counter switching, trying to get Rapid Star into a 1v2 against Toys. That's an extremely dangerous lane for both of them. And the ganks are going to be extremely impactful. But TPA, even with this matchup, should still win the mid lane. It's going to be a bit of a farm off, though, and there'll be a lot of attention paid to that bottom lane since both those guys are extremely vulnerable to ganks. Nothing coming in the jungles, but all going on in the lanes. Let's have a look, and you can see Lil Ball's picking up the blue buff. He's going to take it, and Taipei Assassin's immediately switching things up. They're going to try and come around the backside of Rapid Star. Rapid Star maybe spotting it. He's going to back straight off, puts the ward in that tri bush. And you can see Sona coming around, going to have that poke. Stanley taken down very low by Shy there. Meanwhile, down the bottom, if we can just get a glimpse of Sona, Sona taking some damage from Rapid Star. And again, the lanes trying to change their dynamic, and Carthus has gone back to the middle. They're trying to swap really quickly here, and Lil Ball is actually sitting around at the Dragon. I think he's just trying to catch Madlife warding. He's he got it with a cleaver. He's got a cleaver on him. He's flashed in. He gets exhausted instantly by Madlife, but they're going to turn him down. That's going to be first blood. And it's BB that picks it up once again. And now Carthus is heading north. He's actually going for the race to tell a lie, but he used the teleport but to get back in towards that mid lane. 
and this is what TPA needed jumping out at the start of this game. Wu trying to get punished. The back and forth lane swaps, TPA was ready for him. Amazing play by Lil Balls there. He knew the patterns of supports and knew that once they swapped lanes, they had to get wards in the river. As soon as Mad Life walked for that, he was able to catch him out with the cleaver. And that was, again, a brilliant gank play by Lil Balls. He did that in the first game as well. And he might give his bottom lane the huge advantage it needs. Yeah, Wu being zoned out a little bit here by mistake. Level 2 versus BB at level 3 already. Gonna try and keep him down, of course. That wave will get pushed in towards the tower, so there's only so much they can try and zone him. We do see Cloud Templar coming around just above. Is he gonna be able to sneak through that tri-bush? I'm pretty sure there was a ward that went down in that bush. Yeah. Earlier on, yes it is, they've just passed straight by that ward. And the sapling goes down, mistake just clearing that one out. And that will get reset the lanes. Let's take a look at this top lane. We can see Lil Ball's heading there right now. Jax versus Shen. And Shai does not have any wards here, but he's positioned fairly defensively in his lane. They might end up burning a flash here, but he senses something. Stanley gave a bit of a tell. He pushed up where he would normally, and Shai's playing very carefully here. Lil Ball's now going back down. His rate's completely getting sacrificed for toys, and going into that mid lane, this is toys. Crazy landing skills coming into play again. 34 minions to 18 of Rapid Star. That lane swapping, he was one step ahead and it gave him an early lead. Now he's just trying to punish Rapid Star with it. And the clever player Cloud Templar there. You can see thrown a sapling at the walls. He's trying to get the timers going down, trying to keep the position of little balls. We know that he's at the top there, just taking the golems. So he's gonna come around. Shy is just gonna get pushed against his tower. Instead, little balls looking like he may go for the invade of his own. He heads down towards the middle. We can see Cloud Templar just stepping off at the side there, trying to go towards Toys. Toys, of course, very vulnerable as Lil Balls going for the Wolves, and they're both counter-invading each other's Wolves. They're just both trying to get scouting information, and they are right on top of each other. Same level. Lil Balls going with his Dorn Shield Mundo build once again. Very effective in the previous games. And even just Stanley's aggression in the top lane is keeping him in it. Oftentimes, Jax can be very aggressive trades 1v2, but he sensed Lil Balls was there, and it's allowed Shen to push up the tower. Now Lil Balls trying to gank around Rapid Star, and Cloud Templar again trying to get bottom. He got spotted out by the end of that ward. Lil Balls is trying to zone Rapid Star out of mid. Yeah, he, could, he steps onto a trap, actually, I think he was. Straight on, came in, trap Rapid Star immediately aware. So they know the jungle's positions. They're going to try and counter this one. Type Assassin's getting poked off just heavily here on this bottom lane. Wound doing a lot of damage down on towards Mistake there. And life again, the poke from these two. How do you rate these two lanes between them? I and mean, obviously we've seen the Ezreal Sona, so much the power in that lane, but Caitlyn Sona versus Azira Ezreal. And this is that support Zyra that Azubu Frost actually were the first ones to play Mad Life. A lot of experience on it. It's all about the team fighting phase, but you can actually get extremely aggressive with Zyra in the lane. Mistake wants to be high, heavy, and strong with the poke. But BB gets caught up by the root. You can see the aggression that comes down. Two plants getting spawned, and BB getting zoned out right away. Getting pushed heavily there, and Mad Life managing to put a lot of damage down, so forcing him back. Is he going to go back off? Yes, he will. He's going to yeah. have to buy. He will not be able to stick around. Of course, Sona had gone back. We are seeing the top lane trading blows as well. Jack's down to about half health there. And Toys now heading south. Aren't they going to go for invaders? Is it just going to be simply be the race? Or are they well, going to try, try a four-man gank down at the bottom here? You can see that Azubu Frost had pushed up, and since BB went back to base, you thought maybe they were going to try a tower push, but they're also playing conservatively, and they had to walk back out. They decided against that one. Lowball's spending a lot of time trying to counter invade and create things. He's falling a bit behind for himself. He's only level four at seven minutes, and giving a level or experience edge to Cloud Templar's Maokai could be dangerous. Every time Cloud Templar's had a level advantage on an enemy jungler, he's pushed it really, really hard. And if they get some kind of successful gank, it could be very dangerous for TPA. Yeah, and in the middle, we're seeing a huge CS advantage already building by Toys. Toys 63 to 42. He's got a 20 CS difference. And the top lane, Stanley versus Shai, does a 10 CS difference there. Stanley's starting to build a lead as well. So these lanes actually going out quite well for Taipei Assassins. You can see that reflected in the gold advantage already built up. And this is what they need because Azubu Frost has went with a very strong AoE team fight, late game team, and TPA is a lot more about laning. Karthus is the kind of the other thing that will be their late game insurance if they can get there, but for the most part, this is a composition revolving around early game pressure, and that's what they're applying right now. They've got the one early kill, but mainly just out laning. One and a half thousand gold advantage is very high for this point in the game, and they are keeping the pressure down on everyone from Zuma Frost across the map. Toys picking up the blue buff for himself. Rapid start yet to go across, but Cloud Tampa will pull it. Down that bottom lane, Woo, you can see with that double Dorans against the single Dorans of the Vampire Acceptor for BB. BB trying to continue that poke with Mistake's help. And they're going to get a couple of hits on the tower. The first few hits 
for the bottom lane. So neither team, neither team, sorry, able to really fast push either turrets. The top lane, I think, seems to be the one where the turret may go. You can see Shy being very aggressive on it. And I really just have to hand it to Toys in the mid lane here because last game he was substantially ahead of Rapid Star with a with the opposite matchup, and now he's just 34 minions ahead. Karthus versus Nivea. He is outplaying Rapid Star for the most part in this matchup. Rapid Star trying to get in for the race, but Toys is just completely keeping them for himself. He's going to be the fed Karthus here, and if they can turn the team fights around on Azubu Frost, like what happened to them last game, they'll be in good shape, especially with how strong they're laning. Yeah, and of course he's been stealing away Rapid Star's blades as well. So he's getting the grand share of both lanes. As it is, remember he had the use, he just start off down that bottom, he'd use the teleport, he has got that teleport available, should it require it later in the team fights. Something that Azubu Frost do not have, not to mention, of course, you've got Stanley's ultimate that can get himself in there. Bottom lane, there's Toys. Now he's taking away the Wolves. Is he leaving anything for Lil Balls? Lil Balls, meanwhile, in the top lane, is forcing the pressure on towards the Shy. Does keep him back there, and that's going to be a lane push from Lil Balls, which I'm not sure if Stanley's going to be quite happy with that. I think they're okay. They're trying to create a lot of pressure onto Shy, and this is Lil Balls' and TPA's overall team strategy. Because they're giving so much farm to Toys, they don't want Moonga to fall behind, which means he does have to leech experience from other sources. He is about going for lanes. He's level 7, which means he isn't behind despite getting everything for toys. It's actually much more efficient when two members get experience in lanes than just one. With that just push, he's put himself ahead of Cloud Templar, which is extremely important since we talked about it earlier. Yeah, and again, that mid lane, it's just the advantage continues as the crowd still cheers those ward kills. Of course, the Oracle has now been bought, picked up by Cloud Templar. They're clearing out that mid lane. Little Ball's not quite with that Oracle yet. Gotta be careful he doesn't walk straight into it. Here comes the ultimate. It's actually the Cup Source. Where is it going? Is it just pressure on Mad Life? Are they just trying to force the turret here? You can see BB immediately with that wave trying to put as much pressure down as possible. Not exactly sure where that ultimate came out though. They're just trying to push down the turret. They're making it not appealing for Zubu Frost to stay there in fear of dying. It forced Mad Life to go back and it forced Cloud Templar to run to the bottom lane, which essentially makes them safe from ganks. They're just trying to push down this turret as fast as possible. They want to get out of this lane and apply their pressure elsewhere. A little confusing on the use of that ult, but I'm pretty sure it was about the fast push. And yeah, Shai also taking some damage. Cloud Templar was forced to go down there and there was half the health stripped off that turret. So on that regards, it definitely worked out, but it's a little confusing when we're closing in on the dragon fight potentially coming in a minute or two's time. So it's 180 seconds on that cooldown. Stanley just getting stunned out with a counter strike from Shy there, and you can see already Empowered Strike doing a bit of damage to Stanley. And you know, despite the fact they're even in the farm, a Fed Jax will be a very, very dangerous thing late game. And this is something Stanley does on Shen. He'll get the Cage's lucky pick as well as the Heart of Gold. He really just likes to get to the late game and make sure he's extremely powerful with all that split push. He had an early edge on Shy, but I think because he went with that double GB10 as Low Balls takes in another ward, he's getting bullied a bit by Shy, and that's why Shy's been able to sit up and camp him in that top lane. It is dangerous if Shy's able to force a team fight before Stanley gets his items. Azubu Frost would have an edge off of that. But Toys still farming, still stealing rates, 124 to 94. Both teams of Oracles now just taking down each other's wards. Is a battle for wards. Many wards died on the Saturday. And now it's been reflected in the crowd's appreciation. <laughs> it is all across the map. Which also, of course, means there's not really going to be anything coming from this because they are completely spotting each other's positions out. Of course, Requiem will be available in about 30, 40 seconds time. So let's see if Plato's houses do try and push something on this bottom turret. We are coming out to 12 and a half minutes, so they want to take this first turret down as much as they can, and of course, then turn things onto the dragon. My Plato's houses definitely appear to be the team trying to push the pace on Azubu Frost. And this is something that TPA may have taken from Team WE. You can see Low Balls is just down there trying to pressure the lane, making Azubu Frost react to them, and that's why Cloud Templar just spent his entire game walking around and hoping low balls ganks and tries to counter gank. Will they walk into one here? He's coming up for Rapid Star, trying to land a cleaver. Rapid Star looks like he's just going to walk away. Right. Toy's taking a bit of damage there, but you can see, see that he's 40 CS ahead of Huge Rapid Star in that mid. And that is a big, big difference, considering they've effectively been 1v1 throughout it with zero health from the junglers. How is that gold laid? You can see the gold stack, and it is a small difference. Wow, it's a light, it's a 700 gold difference. That's a pretty huge difference in the grand scheme of things. And 
more importantly, BB is leading once again as the AD carry. And this is across the board, they are out farming. Even low balls, despite deferring so much farm to Karthus, has a minion kill edge on Cloud Templar. They need to force a team fight almost at some point because their laning phase is coming out big. Once they kill a tower, they're gonna try to create action on the rest of the map. Azumu Frost is very much in stall town right now. TPA doing a fantastic job farming, especially toys. This is a huge score for 13 minutes, 156 minions. And as you said, really gonna get that item advantage soon. Maybe he's gonna go for Froggen's record, let's see. In the world finals. In the world finals, that would be pretty ballsy play. He got the ability to go for it, shy being aggressive on towards Stanley again there, but Stanley will finally back away. And we see Wung, of course, taking away those gums in the bottom there. Rapid stuff, trying to put a bit of pressure on towards that turret. We see in both lanes all taking a bit of a harassment here. Wall ball's coming around the back. Shy is going to get pushed, and Stanley's trying to bait it in there. Has he going to go for the taunt there? Shy is just going to be let to back away, didn't want to go for the engagement, wasn't really sure, spotted Rapid Star heading up the river there, Shy putting the ward down, and we are seeing that bottom lane, they are very low, the Carthus Ultimate not coming out, the Snipe's going to come across, that's going to catch Mad Life, here comes the Carthus Ultimate, they might get a double kill, no, a heal from the room, it saves one, but that's going to be the kill of the top lane, the bottom lane, sorry, here we see Toys going in towards that, that's the teleport from Toys, Wall of Pain not quite landing, but Rapid Star's going to get, oh shit, two, the rebound wave goes in, and that's going to be Shen coming across, they're going to try and get out towards Shy. Rapid Star's going to get dropped, can they take Shy down as well? They do! And it's three kills! Meanwhile down the bottom, there's another trade! That's an ace! It's the Soda going down, they managed to ace them 15 minutes in, with nothing happening for 15 minutes, they suddenly pull off the ace all across the map. And they take down a turret on top of everything, so that 2,000 advantage just ballooned to 5,000 toys was the key to all that. Karthus ultimate to start it, teleport into finish, and that is across the board, coordination by TPA, almost too hard to follow, and you can tell it caught Azubu Frost completely off guard. It caught me off guard as well, I've got to be honest, 2-0, two, zero, two for toys, 3-0 on for BB, 0-1-4 for Sona, and wow. The assists and gold spreading across, which suddenly gave them that huge boost in gold. You can see it is a four, six thousand gold lead. Obviously, they built up a big lead to start with from picking up all the CS. They do manage to force down that bottom turret. They're gonna pick up the dragon, and it's gonna give Taipei Assassins another huge lead. Can they deal with it this time, though? Azuma Frost. They had this last time, and Azuma Frost had the team come to deal with it. Can they push the pressure on Azuma Frost? This is a much larger lead than last game. And now that they've taken the first turret down, the siege from BB's Caitlyn, especially that he has the big lead onto Wu. Now he will outrange Ezreal, and he will be the one zoning him out in team fights. Unlike the Ezreal versus Vayne matchup in the last one, they need to be careful that Shy doesn't get too big because he has been farming quite well, and he's going to try to split push this top turret. But everyone is converging onto him, and he has no flash. So they're trying to collapse on him, but he's going to be leap striking straight away from that one. Shy was not going to get caught out, spotted them early enough. Have they realized that Mistake is in that tri-bush? Was there a ward just below? I can't quite catch it. No, there wasn't. So it's just his spider sense is being there. They're going to take down this mid turret as Uber Frost, though. Now Wall of Pain is not going to be enough to force them away. They will finish it off and wound getting the damage done. And they will back away. You could see that Stanley was heading straight up north, but getting spotted by that ward. Bibi's got to be careful up here in the top lane. If Mad Life lands a route, they will be able to kill him. Oh, and there he went through. BB baiting it out there, doing I mean, a bit more damage, and there's Taipei Assassins now turning a push of their own, they're not going to have the minions though to do the damage. While this is all happening, Stanley getting the free farm down the bottom, you can see Wung is going down there to try and deal with him, so now we have a different dynamic, we have Stanley versus Wung in the bottom, and we have Shy versus BB in the top. And the push from TPA is going to be coming out hard, but Azubu Frost has that Anivia, which is legendary for her turtle Top capabilities. And Top lane is just getting pushed down by BB. Shai actually took a hell of a lot of damage there. Took a lot of punishment from BB, and BB really is dominating that top lane. You can see that Shai's had to back away from it. BB has, has got a wave coming in. He may be able to take that turret down, you know. He's completely unattested on that it. top lane. Meanwhile, the mid lane's also being pushed. Azubi Frost having to deal with it, and BB will take down this top turret. And he is 2,000 gold ahead of Womb on the other side, so they have a big, big advantage that they do need to press. We saw them take an early Baron in some of these earlier matches, and since it's so hard to push turrets against Anivia, they might look to force around objectives. That middle turret is being very well held by Zubu Frost. That's going to be the next thing TPA wants to group up and take. It's so difficult to push into an Anivia, but they do have now a 7.5. 
3,000 gold advantage, and this is the moment they need to just pounce. Last time, they had that advantage growing and growing, then they hit Ever on the map at once, getting that huge lead. Now the channel's up again, now the Rec Room's up again, they might look to do something similar again. Well, at 30% gold advantage they have over Zubu Frost, definitely a quite for the items you can see. Are nearly completing things, Infinity Edge almost already completed by BB. And he has the gold for it, it's just a matter of him going back. He's going to actually be able to complete an Infinity Edge and a Zeal once he gets back, which is crazy since Wu only has that Phage and he's still a ways away from Trinity Force. They're now, like they did last game with the advantage, pushing in the blue buff very hard, and Rapid Star, without a blue buff, cannot turtle add Infinity in the middle, so they will be able to push down that mid turret fairly shortly. Hit and run damage done by Taipei Assassin's Dead, taking away that blue buff very quickly, and now a 60 CS difference between Boris and Rapid Star, a very huge lead on Karthus. And that ultimate, like you mentioned earlier on, it is going to be doing some serious damage. A 2,000 gold lead on both carries, in fact all the carries, because you can see Stanley, even in the top lane, has a 2,000 gold advantage over Shy, which is something I don't recall ever seeing, considering Shy has been able to get on Jack Snow, his Telltale champion, who steps on a trap there, and BB immediately pounces and tries to put a chunk of damage down on towards Shy. The Taipei Assassin is being very aggressive in that top lane, they need to be careful, they're going to try and catch off, they have to use the Crescendo to get away, but a mistake may well pay the price for the Flock of but they're going to dive in, BB needs to back away, he just needs to accept the fate here, there comes the Shy, Toys also teleported in, Taipei Assassin trying to turn this one, can they get anything straight in there? No, you can see Azuma Frost very much backing off very, very quickly there. Really good disengage. That was fantastic for Azubu Frost. They actually burned the majority of TPA's engagement tools with a huge disadvantage, got away with the kill, and nobody died. So the resources that actually expended is going to be huge. That makes it very difficult for TPA to force something immediately. Even then, they didn't even get that low, so they might be able to hold the mid turret as well. That was huge for them, and Lowball is getting poked down pretty heavily in the mid lane. Azuba doing a really good job turtling this out the last five minutes or so. Yeah, Lil Ball's ultimate being forced to be used there again, so many ultimates used, only the Requiem and the Kaelin ultimate available. Kaelin, of course, is going to be on a much quicker cooldown, but they do not want to burn that Requiem. I thought he might come out in that last fight, but there was nobody really low enough to go for it, and BB again finds himself a lane, and it is against Shy again, and he's just going to continue farming out. He's getting really scary right now. Infinity Edge Zeal compared to Wombs, only Phage and Ashin. So he can just pretty much destroy anyone he goes up to. TPA now trying to push in the mid lane. Bot lane. They're going to need to push this mid lane in before Shy. it hurts. And Shy's trying to camp. I don't think he can beat BB in a duel. Yeah, Shy's thinking about it. And BB is pretty sure there's someone there. Didn't take a peek though. And instead, Shy has actually backed out of that fight. Didn't want to get involved. But of course he had the Toys Ultimate, so he could have had a dual combo straight away. He'd been able to get in there, do a heck of a lot of damage. So we are seeing Stanley versus Woon on that top lane. But meanwhile in the middle, Taipei is going to try and push this one. They may have a decent wave to try and get the poke on the woods of turret. It's not going to be enough because Rapid Star clears it out. That's going to be Lil Ball's forced to flash Ooh. out of there. BB was coming up. They wanted to get that turret down, but they didn't quite have the damage. And Lil Ball's nearly getting caught out. Dragon is up in 12 seconds, so the teams will start positioning for this. You can see Stanley's ultimate just about available. And this is the struggle for Azubu Frost. They're too weak to start team fights, so if they go in on this dragon, they're gonna most likely lose the fight. They're all about turning that middle turret, and TPA taking the objectives when they're available, but really all the attention needs to be on the middle turret for them because as long as Azubu Frost holds that mid turret, the TPA won't be able to close out this game. They are extending their advantage, however, and with that, all the team fights will go in their favor. They do have to find a way to create action, though. Because with the big lead, it means nothing if you can't kill towers. You can't kill towers. They do have a 2 to 1 advantage. They have a huge gold lead. 9k difference now for Type Assassins, which this early on is massive. Stanley, of course, is going to start split pushing, start farming, start causing problems for Shy in that top lane. But Shy, they need to be very careful of him because he's just going to get that free farm going. It's going to become a beast if they land. Managed to drag the game out, which is what they're trying to do. As Ubufoss, they realize they're in that stall position. They need to do what CLG EU can do so successfully with Anivia. And as Ubufoss, you know, having beaten CLG EU twice, which I'm sure they won't like me reminding them, they have that ability. They know how to play against it. And they've seen that tactic work against them, so they know how to execute it. Again, here you see Toys trying to get aggressive on towards Mad Life. Mad Life just backing away. There's a lot of damage coming across there. Didn't bother using Ace in the hole. They're going to keep putting the pressure down. They might be able to get them towards the turret here because BB is incredibly strong right now. 
And they're just trying to poke down as much as possible to make it so they can't turtle the turret. But Anivia's wave clear is so great that they've still got two-thirds health on that turret. They've spent the last six or so minutes paying a lot of attention to that mid turret. They haven't made progress, so they have to switch something up or consider diving or creating some big action. Those walls are dangerous for TPA. They got about another third of the turret there, so they are finally making progress. This is a very effective turtle thus far by Zubu Frost. TPA really has to create something. Well, they've just warded out almost like they're going to go for Baron here. I'm just going to put that out there. That's looking like they're trying to force a fight here. The objective control could be the things they go for. They've been able to get down dragons, and they know that they win 5v5 teamfights, so if they can force a Zubu Frost into them, they'd be able to turn, and you can take turrets. Once you kill Rapid Star, it's just a matter of getting him in a spot. The blue buff's up again. They look to want to go for this one, but they contested so many blues. They're trying to steal this. Oh, Rapid Star just able to get it off. Yeah, he tried to get a few in there. Wasn't able to. They're trying to pin off little balls. They do back it off. That shows their hand. And they wanted that, but it wasn't available to them. Meanwhile, BB continues the farm. He's heading down south. He's going to take down that huge wave down south, which means Azubu Frost realized they've stalled it out for another few minutes. And even with this stall, TPA is doing a very good job to make sure they're getting more gold than Azubu Frost. In their semifinal game against Moscow 5, there was a new new cog on Moscow 5, and they were very much about getting it to late game. But once it got to 40 minutes, there was a 16,000 gold advantage for TPA, which meant they could just roll through them in team fights. They're trying for the same thing here because they have a 9,000 gold lead, and it's only getting bigger as this game moves on. As long as you don't make mistakes, they should be able to take out the late team fights but they still have to find that option of how they create because they have the gold lead, they have the team fight advantage, they just have to find the upper hand of position. Well, BB is going to become a beast here. He's going to go back to Phantom Dancer, almost certainly going to get completed. He's teleporting back right now. Let's see what he comes out with. No. Last Whisper. Goes for the Last Whisper instead, just has that zeal in there. So once that armor penetration in, there's another ward. It's lost. And the ever and never ending fight of League of Legends. The ward count, I would love to see that. You know, we saw the info stats. I'd love to see how many wards have died. There were 80 kills in that one 60 minute CLG versus WE game, and that was just on CLG's side. Then many wards killed this. I wouldn't say there's quite as many, because TP is yet to start poking around Baron. But they should look to do that soon. They have so many items coming out on BB. The item advantage is never going to be this disparaging for him. Having that Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, and Zeal compared to just a Trinity Force and Double Dorn's Blade on Womb is massive. Even after that, you look at Toys. He's going for the same item build as Rapid Star, but he's completed his Rod of Ages and a Nilsi Large Rod on top of that. They look to try to finish off this mid turret, but they are actually playing very, very cautious. They can't seem to land quite the right Karthus wall. They can't get quite enough poke out. This turret has been up forever. And it's a two and a half thousand gold between the top lane as well. Stanley now got the Iron Spark, got the Aegis of Legion, now building that Trinity Force up just against Shy's Trinity Force. However, Shy really only needs that Trinity Force if he can get by himself a little bit of time to jump in there, get that counter strike off, and obviously BB is going to be the target. The question is, can he get onto BB successfully? Can he get kept away from him? Of course, he's going to have a lot of tools in there. He's going to be jumping almost certainly into a crescendo. He's going to be covering off his AD carry as much as possible. That mid lane continues slowly to get chipped down. And in these kind of games, when there's low action, the action seems to explode and just all happen at once. And it also has a huge, huge impact because now that we're already 27 minutes into the game, the death timers are getting longer and longer. And if there's a team fight off the end of it, there will be more and more objectives taken. If someone wins a team fight big here, they're going to take Baron and multiple turrets. It's just a matter of TPA getting into the point where they can do that because Shy is 1v1ing Stanley up in that top lane. They can't quite get down on that. They still have to create action, and when they do get action, there's going to be a lot of it, so be ready. Zubu Frost trying a little bit of poke here. Maybe trying to force something out there. I'm not too sure whether they're in the right position. I think they were to keep Stanley busy so they could try and get a force of a full v4, but you can see Toys down that bottom. He's pushing on towards the inner turret now. There comes the True Shot Barrage. That will clear up most of the way, and they will continue the poke, the poke battle. From an 8-kill game, to a 54 kill game last match. It's definitely a contrast. TPA, much different style coming out here, and it's about just laning. And when they clashed into all those team fights, they realized they didn't have the team fight team. This time, they also realized they don't have the team fighting team, so they're not crashing into fights as much as they were, were last match. Instead, they're just focusing on getting that gold advantage up. It's 9.6 thousand here, and when they take that tower, it's gonna hit double digits. Well, five digits if you count all of them, but dragging up, they're going to take that. So many objectives here, and they're really just 
waiting until Azubu Frost comes out to fight them. They do seem content just farming. We're gonna pick up the dragon. It's gonna be for free. Azubu Frost won't contest that one. And Stanley and Shy continue to farm out that top lane. And the gold advantage now 11,000 in favor of Taipei Assassins. They are one game down, 29 minutes into this game. And the solo lanes really continue to just farm. Might have to keep up. There is a huge difference in gold between the carries at the moment. 10,900 shy of 11,000 compared to just shy of 8,000 for Rapid Star. That is a huge difference. And of course, the AD carries has a 2,500 gold difference. The top lane, the Bruisers, has a 2,500 gold difference. It is pretty substantial on the right players. I want to say this, BB is remarkably scary, and he's only going to get scarier. Late game, Caitlyn is very underestimated, but having 650 range makes her extremely, extremely hard to close on, and the fact that he has just been completely free farming on top of getting three kills and all those dragons, he's a couple hundred gold away from a Phantom Dancer, and that's almost a full 80 carry build in 30 minutes. That is immensely powerful for TPA, and once they get that Phantom Dancer, I wouldn't be surprised with a death cap on toys as well if they then go to fight around Baron, because Azubu Frost is nowhere close to that item threshold, and that's going to be really big for TPA if they get to those items and then force Baron. All wards lose their lives. You can see right now that toys has just completely cleared out that bottom wave, and they seem quite content to keep farming that top lane. I can't tell whether it's Stanley quite happily just holding out the lane or whether Shy is forcing them to stay in that lane because they just want Shy to get stronger late game. And this is really just item thresholds, I think. All the big items are starting to get completed for TPA, and then they'll create action. Video Fan Dance for Last Whisper. Trinity Force just got completed on Stanley. There's another 80 gold. Toys is going to have his death cap the next time he goes back to base. We could see some action very shortly because they just hit a ton of premiums, and they are really rich right now in comparison to Zubu Frost. So let's see if they do create some action. You can see Madlife trying to cover off the Baron there. But it is a huge, huge advantage. Balls, trying to take down Rapid Star's Banshee's Veil before that fight was potentially going to happen. But we are seeing Toys heading towards the blue. He will have the cooldown. As the all coverage continues to get dropped. But still yet to take down this middle turret. I mean, it's it's almost like they're keeping it up for a reason. They could easily just tank it down at any chosen moment. But they're not going through right now. Ooh, Stanley wanted to get onto a Shy there. Shy just leaps back into his own minions. They will force the pressure. The Lil is trying to sneak around the side. But again, unable to push anything on Azubu Foss. They're stalling out quite well here. And here comes the Baron sweep. They have enough damage that they could take down Baron very fast. And it could also peel very well. The danger for them in team fights is if Rapid Star is able to isolate a member of their team with his wall. But with what they're doing right now, they're waiting for that blue buff timer to spawn. They're going to try to take that. And they're just flanking around Azubu Frost, trying to poke them down before this. And wow, just the one ultimate from Caitlyn taking Rapid Star to a third. And they're, they're trying to initiate right off here. They've tried to dive into it. The Wall of Pain getting across. Actually, Rapid Star's getting shredded pretty low. But they're not going to go full engagement here. Cloud Templar might get dropped. They do target him, but they do not go for it. Stanley, that taunt, if that would have landed on anyone, it would have been the death of them. Time for assassins were very much ready for that, but you saw the burst damage going on towards Toys there. He was forced to back off. They need to just force around Baron because that middle turret is not giving an inch. And they poke down Azubu Frost fairly lowly, so they're just waiting for Azubu to try to get them off Baron. They should be going for an objective here because they're so strong that if Azubu Frost comes to peel, they'll be able to get rid of them. And here, they're starting the Baron. Azubu Frost has to contest. TPA needs to peel. TPA go across there. They might take it down before they react. Yes, they do. They took it incredibly quickly. Can they try to get on 20? Do they want to get on 20? That's the question. Are they happy with that? Now they can just push the towers. And they quite help you straight up fight. He can see the little balls. He wants to catch up to it. Good stuff from Rapid Star, keeping them away. And they will start pushing it. Taipei Assassins surely can push the advantage finally on this middle turret. If they have an initiate, it's going to be from Stanley with a flash taunt because that is their way of getting in. And they are so much stronger than Azubu Frost. Now look at that poke. This turret going to fall. I don't know how long Azubu can turtle itself because they're really weak. Look at that damage! The crescendo oh. missing there from a snake there. I think the Banshee's Veil didn't even get popped there. Rapid Star managing to get away from that one. Hey, he went for it there. Maybe he's trying to catch out Wungo. I don't know. But you can see Taipei Assassin is going to try and push that big advantage. That tower is getting dropped in seconds. They're going to continue pushing forward. Now he's in the hole onto Wung Wung there. Managing to force him backwards. They could take this one out. Stanley has the damage. Has the tower. 
expensive, and of course, Lil Balls, we know how long that ultimate is going to last. He has popped his ultimate. He wanted to go for it. They dive out towards Cloud Temper. There's the card. This ultimate isn't going to be enough damage. They're going to try and push something here, but Shy is going to get involved. They do not have the damage to try and beat back. And Taipei Assassin slowly but surely beat them down. Mad Life having to use the ultimate there. They're going to take the inhibitor to it down. Stanley just missing a max range taunt on Shy there. They keep getting forced back, but they cannot. Force to repel Taipei Assassins. They take down the inhibitor for free. Nobody dying though, and they just back off. That was a very impressive push by TPA. They brute forced their way right through Anivia, and with those item thresholds, now they have even more armor onto Lil Balls and Stanley once they go back. Everyone was over 1500 gold, only going to extend their lead. They took that from the outer turret to the inhibitor straight. The Baron buff is still over half remaining for TPA. They're gonna do that to another lane, and it's on Azubu Frost to initiate because TPA has actually shown they can just brute force their way through and get things done. Azubu Frost has to stop something, otherwise they're just going to let TPA win the game. So Azubu Frost, they came back from the last match, they are still at 6-2 in kills. It has definitely been a low kill game, especially in comparison to the last one, when we saw 54 kills. But 5-1 in turrets shows that Taipei Assassins learned from their mistakes in the last match. Excuse the pun. They did manage to pick up. They drove home a huge advantage here. And just looking across the board, the item build, they have such huge, enormous benefits. The ability power across the Taipei Assassins pick up the dragon, no problem at all. Their gold advantage continues. 15,000 gold now. Big difference. And now they're just going to try that same push they did mid onto the bottom lane, Randwin's Omen on Lil Balls. He can tank that turret for no, quite a long it. time, and there's no one there to defend it, so the seat, if it happens, is going to happen at the inhibitor turret, because this outer one is gonna be gone uncontested. Shy is completely well away from this one. They're gonna lose the inner turret, they might even lose the inhibitor turret before he even gets close. Shy is still in that top lane, hasn't reacted to the Taipei Assassin's push here, because he knew that Stanley was not there. He's trying to deal with it. He's got super minions coming up the middle. It's a straight four on four. This is what we talked about earlier in the game. They have that 4 on 4 fight, and they can just keep driving in. Super minions in that middle. Where is Stanley heading? Stanley wants to take the inner turret. Taipei Assassin's just baiting this one out. And this is no teleport or way of actioning against Stanley's split push. Shy cannot even 1v1 him at this point. So if he wants to ult in and create a 5v4, he will be able to. They're just going to slowly make sure they get as many turrets as possible here. And they might actually go to flank around. It's so hard to push in against Anivia, but with the middle inhibitor down, if Lil Balls and Stanley actually came through the mid inhibitor and flanked around the side, they could very well get this bottom turret. They're not doing that quite yet because they're trying to split push this down. But if they actually want to create, I'd expect them to do that. So they're just stalling it out. He saw Toys just going back, picking up the Void Staff as well. So all that armor penetration, all that damage could just come look down in one oh. huge Requiem strike. And look at that. They're just keeping them here. It is just a three-man poke, keeping Azubu Frost completely pinned off. Stanley, meanwhile, he's going to find actually he's on the walls. He's having a fight with Shy here. Shy's going to have to back off from this one. I don't think he's got the damage to do with Stanley right now. And you can see he's definitely going to have the huge advantage. Of course, Requiem will be available to him. Meanwhile, starts to poke with Shy. Definitely going down. Here comes the Requiem. Stanley's going to flash. He's going to be down. Stanley picks up the kill. And will that turn the advantage for Azubu Frost? Stanley can still all in the team. And Taipei Assassins, are they going to go for the turret here? There's the ultimate from Lil Balls. Will they go towards it? Here comes the oh, teleport comes in. Here comes the shared ultimate. They're going to dive in. They will get the inhibitor turret down. They're going to go for the They're like that. They're going to get dropped. They're diving in. Whoops and exhausted. The damage on Whoops. Ace in the hole. Not enough damage. They're going to get the turret. He's trying to bouncy dive Stanley. Back off, man. You are not invincible. He's going to get dropped. He has finally gone down. The Nivea ultimate. The Nivea damage coming in, but it doesn't matter. The next turrets are going down. The Zubu Frost are in all manner of trouble. BB though, having to back out, taking incredibly low. And Taipei Assassins disengage. 8 3 up. But they took down the Nexus turret and another inhibitor. Another extremely impressive push by TPA. They're just showing how far ahead they are. The Zeke's Herald on mistake. The Baron regen was sustained through, through so much of that. Baron buff is now off them, but the seed is just going to continue. Here's the next thing. Toys hasn't died this game. Can he get another flawless <laughs> victory for himself? The Baron buff is what they'll be waiting for. They are so strong. They cleared it almost instantly last time. It's going to be even faster now. And with the inhibitor being down in the mid lane, it's going to be hard for Azubu Frost to push out. Actually, TPA pushed straight through that inhibitor for the Nexus turret. They did take out the bottom inhibitor, so the pressure to the bottom lane isn't going to be as high as they'd like when they go to poke on for the next Baron. But even with that, they've shown they can go almost wherever they want, and Azubu Frost does not have the damage to repel their tank line. 
really Stanley and low balls just crush through, and no one can even get close to BB right now because of all those items. So Zuberfrost realizing there's no ward placement, trying to push out as quickly and as aggressively as possible because they know that that Baron will be spawning shortly in Taipei Assassin, setting themselves up for this one. Defending out as the, still the cheers come, but those wards going down. And you can see Count Templar, if he shows himself down there, it's only just going to push through. There's the middle inhibitor respawning for Azubu Frost, but honestly, they know he's not there. They can just drive through, and there's nothing Azubu Frost can do to it because Cloud Templar has been caught out of position. He's going to drive through, and now he's going to be tied by Assassins, picking up another inhibitor. The bottom inhibitor wasn't touched. Actually, I'll tell a lie on the back. I thought it was. In the last match, instead they just went straight for the Nexus. Here we go, 22 seconds, and the Baron will be available. And Taipei Assassins immediately reacting and going towards it. And this is one, as long as they have a few wards on the approach, which Mistake can easily provide with them having two stacks, they'll know exactly if they can take the Baron for free or if they can peel. Either way, they'll win the fight. So this Baron, probably going to go down shortly. Azuku Frost looks like they want to harass their running through wards. The GPA just goes and fights them. They're going to clean up, but they're going to try to finish off the Baron first, maybe. They're going to try to get the Baron. They do. They got it very quickly. The Wall of Pain landed. The Crescendo gets across. Mad Life is going to get caught down here. Fist to go. He's got the Oracle. He's trying to use as much as he can. Lil Ball's getting involved. Ace and the Hobby have walked off by Woo. Not the ideal target. Toys is going to get ready. Toys goes down. First death of the game. That's going to be Coley. The Requiem's going to come out. It's going to be Cloud Devil. It's a triple kill again. Drop his last game. Toys down. Drop his last going to drop in a wall. Just about keep him off. Taipei Assassin's going to try and get around. They're trying to circumvent on towards Rapid Side. He's going to get caught out by Lil Balls here. That's going to be the slow. It's going to be enough damage. No! He just manages to keep him back. And Wound gets exhausted. That's going to be Wound going down. Baby manages to catch up to him. Baby gets another. Rapid Side is egged. And Lil Balls is going to be careful there. Towers on him. That There's is going to be the Nexus. That is going to be the ace. Taipei Assassin's will take game two, and Azubu Frost are going to find themselves in a 1-1 one -one position. Taipei Assassin very, very strong throughout this match. Again, bringing out that surprise hit with the start of England, something they didn't expect, and so, so dominating. TPA coming back strong, 1-1 now in these epic finals, and that was methodical in the way they took that down. They knew what point they needed to hit before they could press, and then they just rolled through them. That happened early game where they got the ace out of nowhere and as soon as they hit those item thresholds they went for the Baron and just rolled through. That was crisp, impressive play by TPA and in stark contrast to their other strategies which was so fast and aggressive, that was just standard methodical play. Very well done. And how many times have we seen that Requiem now turn them games? Another triple kill. We saw a quadra kill in game one. Wow, toys farming. I'm just looking across at it. 412 CS at the end of that game to 335. Absolutely outstanding. And proving for the second game running, he can outfarm Rapid Star. And he seems to have a big edge in that lane. That's going to be on Azubu Frost, maybe Cloud Templar to help him out a bit. Because if they key off of something like that, just key off him being able to destroy, they pick the strong lanes. Even the bottom lane has shown to be a little bit better at farming. And Azubu Frost has the team play edge right now. If TPA continues those leading strategies, they're going to force Azubu Frost out of those teamfight comps, and they're going to make Azubu Frost pick more in the early game so they can avoid getting snowballed like that, because that's something that's very hard to play against. So we're going to check out a replay towards the end of the game. Take us through it, Jan. I mean, that was a tremendous, tremendous fight. And this is when they're just so far ahead. Lowballs tanks as many turrets as possible, and BB, look at this. He just destroys Woom, and then he just goes straight through the turret because he doesn't care. And this was BB just dominating, did not care about the turrets, had the Baron buff, and this was just after a huge amount of crushing, base tanking the turrets once again. That's how you break the Anivia turtle, really. That was a textbook example of waiting until the right moment and just going through. Yeah, and of course we saw the stall out for so long. Once they picked up that Baron, which was effectively for free because they did it so fast that Azubu Frost didn't react to it, they just pushed their way and drove through that middle from the outer to the inner to the inner head. They just drove straight through one clean sweep. And that was just all about waiting until the right moment. They had a lot of patience, something they didn't really have in the first game. They had that big lead early, but they kept picking bad fights. We even saw, I think it was Reginald said that they did pick bad fights. They adapted to that because it seemed a lot more passive or it seemed a lot slower, but they were really controlled in the way they did those things. And it was just... Great play by them all around. Absolutely fantastic play. So we're a 1-1 even tie. We'll be right back after this short break with analysis from Freak and Rivington. And once more, back by popular demand, 
It is going to be Stick Fugger Fighter 2, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 